In this video, we're gonna find out how we can do conversion tracking with the help of Google Tag Manager and send that information on to our Facebook Pixel. All the more coming up right after this. Hey there, and welcome back to another video of measureschool.com, teaching you the data-driven way of digital marketing. My name is Julian, and in this series on Facebook pixel tracking, we have already discovered how to set up our Facebook base tracking pixel, send in page views and events. And now we need to take care of the most important interaction that the user can take on your website, which is commonly known as a conversion. Now there might be a page that your user should visit or a certain interaction that he should take, but there's actually more information that we can send over to Facebook, like the value of the conversion, so we can optimize our ad campaigns towards that and then later see that in our ads interface. So it's crucial that we set up conversion tracking and purchase tracking correctly on our website. And now I'm gonna show you how to do this with the help of Google Tag Manager. So let's dive in. Welcome back to our demo shop. In our last video, we have already installed our Facebook base pixel, which you need to have installed in order for the other interactions to be picked up. Uh, we installed the page view event and the add to cart event on button clicks of the add to cart button. Now, one thing that is missing, which is very important for Facebook ads is actually the purchase tracking. So if you go to setup, we will go with our manual installation right here. We have already installed this Facebook base pixel code on our page. And if you go to continue, we have our custom events. Now we already talked about the add to cart event. What I want to go over is the purchase event. Now for the purchase event, you simply also need to deploy this tracking code. But what will make your data much better is if you have a conversion value. So for example, $99 and a currency, which is usually not changing, but could be dynamic as well, USD in here. So the code gets a little bit longer. Now, obviously not all of our purchases should be marked as $99. We would need to dynamically insert this with the help of Google Tag Manager. So just to give you an example, let's go back to our demo shop and buy a product. So on any online store, you would go and land on an order received page or a thank you page where you would normally see how much you have spent in your order. Now, this is obviously the amount that we want to send over to Facebook and dynamically fill into this event that we sent to Facebook. How can we get the amount into Google Tag Manager dynamically? Well, there are different methods and we have discussed them in a video about conversion values, which you can check out in the card or in the description below. The most robust way is to build a custom data layer. Now, since I'm here on a WooCommerce store, I've installed a plugin by Thomas Geiger, which is the Google Tag Manager for WordPress plugin, which will fill the data layer for you automatically if you are on a WooCommerce website. So in order to see the data layer and where the information actually is, we need to enter our preview and debug mode. So let's do that first. And I will need to go through another conversion here. And once I'm back on my thank you page, I can look into my data layer and see how it was filled with, with values. So in our case, we have this huge data layer push, which is the GMT 4WP order completed EEC. And as we can see, we have a transaction total in here, which resembles the total amount that was bought by the user. We also have a transaction currency in here, which we could also use if we had different currencies in our store. In our case, that doesn't really change, so I won't pull this from the data layer. I'm just gonna try to pull the transaction total from the data layer. To do this, I will build a variable. Now variables are like placeholders, so you can build them dynamically to pull them from places like the data layer. I will choose as the variable type a data layer variable, and this will allow me to access the information from the data layer. Give this all a name. 
and the only configuration is the data layer variable name. That is the key that we see in this JavaScript object. So in our case, it would be transaction total right here. Just gonna copy this and put this in. And once I have this in here, I can just click on save and I have this now available in my Google Tag Manager as a variable. What does that actually mean? Where can we use them? Well, now we can go to the next step and actually copy our JavaScript code here and implement this as a new tag. This will again will be a custom HTML tag. First of all, give it a name. And as the HTML, we're just gonna paste this in. Now we need to customize this. Again, we don't want all our products once this fires actually result in $99. So we will dynamically insert our variable, which can be done with two curly brackets. Now this opens up a menu with all your different variables in here. So we can just click on our DLV transaction total and that should be replaced dynamically with whatever is in the data layer at that time. Next, we can build a trigger and we want to deploy this on our final checkout page. So we could, for example, look at the URL up here and say we want to deploy this on our order receives page if that's in the URL. It's pretty easily built. We're going to the plus here and creating a new trigger. We'll fire this on the page view tag of our thank you page. And this will be a page view tag, but only firing on some page views where the page URL contains our order received. Let's save this. Save our Facebook purchase pixel, refresh our page and check this all out. Let's go back and go through another conversion. And we get to our order received page. We see that our Facebook event purchase pixel fired and in our Facebook pixel helper, we see that purchase information was transferred with a value of 45. And this corresponds dynamically was inserted through our variable with the amount of 45. So this seems to work fine. Let's head over to our Facebook analytics and go into the event debugging. And also here we see a purchase event that was fired with the value of 45. Now in Facebook itself, we could use this for our custom conversions. So you could create a new custom conversion where you choose our purchase event as a custom conversion. And once you have that set up, you will be able to get columns filled like in the ads manager that correspond to the conversion value of your campaigns. So if you have a campaign here, you should be able to see the actual conversion value in a column that you can add here in your ads account. So that should be filled with the amount that is transferred later on, which will give you much greater data on how many clicks did you receive and how much money did you make in the end. So overall, a really great data set that you should have in your account. Now, don't forget, this is currently just running on our browser. We still need to deploy this as a version. So to do that, you can click that submit button, enter a descriptive name, and publish this to all your users so it's live on your website and their henceforth will be tracked with their purchases. So this is how you can install Facebook pixel tracking for purchases. All right, so there you have it. This is how you can set up your purchase pixel with the help of Google Tag Manager. Now, this is already the end of this little series on Facebook pixel tracking. If you have any questions, then please, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. We always have great discussions there. And if you haven't yet, then please subscribe to the channel right over there because we bring you new videos just like this one every week. Now, my name is Julian. See you in the next one.